All right, thank you, Joe. Hello, Angular people. Um, I want to talk about a project that I've been playing with lately, which really is part of my sort of quest to kind of figure out how to actually build applications in Angular 2. But before I actually talk any more about it, I would just like to show it to you. So if you don't mind that you have a connected device with you that has a web audio capable browser in it, so basically Chrome or Firefox or Safari, would you mind uh, visiting this URL here, turning up the sound for a moment and just playing with it for a few seconds? Yes. So this is roughly what we are looking at. Okay, so when the Angular team started working on Angular 2 a couple of years ago, I'm sure this is not exactly the kind of application they had in mind, but what seems to me to have happened here is that the platform they have built is just way too cool to be wasted on doing only useful things. Uh, because we can also use it to do fun things. Things that might not necessarily uh, translate to any business value, but that are just fun to do. In other words, we can use it to play, to do things that are just you know, fun to do, and there's joy in doing them. Now, of course, we all have this kind of uh, urge to play built into us, but I do think we don't always remember that we are also allowed to play with these tools that we usually use for doing serious business such as Angular 2, because the same features that makes these tools great for doing you know, business applications makes them pretty good for doing experiments and toys and little art projects, such as the one we were just playing with there, which is essentially just an Angular component. So it's called Chimes, and what it does is it listens to click events on its host element and it shovels those click events into this RxJS subject, or the coordinates of those click events, and then it further maps those events to this other RxJS observable called chimes, where it also attaches to each of those coordinate pairs a random musical note. And those random musical notes are selected from a combination of five notes that's built into this application, which sounds like this. So whenever you touch the screen, one of those five notes gets picked at random. And then we hold on to these events for five seconds before they're gone. So that's the way the observables work here. And uh, the way these events then actually materialize on the screen is uh, I'm using the async pi from Angular to make a subscription to that observable. And then for everything that comes out of it, I make one of these inner chime components. And then I use some CSS to actually place that component on the screen in that location where you touched. And so then we have these sounds going on here. And uh, so there are these random notes from which we pick pick the sounds to play, and for each one I actually also have a little mp3 sample that I'm playing, and that represents that individual note. And I'm playing them using the Web Audio API. And th the thing about Web Audio is that we can play as many things as we want at the same time, but we do it always in this thing called the audio context. And that's actually a class that the browser provides as part of the Web Audio API, which we as application developers need to instantiate and then use to play all our sounds. So we need a shared instance of that thing when we want to use it.
And I actually found a pretty neat way to do this in Angular, which is to just take that class and hand it to Angular as a dependency injection provider. Because Angular will then instantiate that class for me, and I can inject it wherever I need to be playing sounds. And uh, where I actually do that then is in that inner chime component. So here's where most of the magic actually happens. So the audio context is, is uh, injected into this component, and that's going to be the same one for each of these components. And then when the component initializes, I use the audio context to actually play a sound. So I create an audio buffer source node, and I load into that buffer the MP3 data for the node that was randomly selected for this chime, and then I just start playing that note. And then five seconds later, when the component is destroyed, I stop playing the note and pull it out from the audio context. And that really takes care of playing all the sounds in this application. But then there were also those visual effects happening on the screen. And those are also built in this same component. So in the components view, there are a couple of divs. And uh, they represent kind of two different parts of the visualization that happens when, when you touch the screen. And they're called the ring and the light. So they're both circles. I'm using the CSS border radius to make them exactly circular in shape. And then for the ring, I actually also draw a CSS border so that it looks like a ring. And what I also do is I assign different colors to these rings based on what note is being played. So every musical note in this application has a pre-assigned color for it as well. The light, on the other hand, is always the same color. So that's a white light drawn, drawn as this uh, radial gradient image that's white in the middle and then fades into transparent on all sides. So those are the two visual components, but you may have noticed that they were actually also moving. And for that, I'm using NG Animate. And uh, Matthias is going to probably tell you a lot more about this on Friday, but I'm just using it here for, for a couple of animations. So for the ring, I have this expand animation, and for the light, I have a flash animation. And they are defined in this component's metadata. So this expand uh, animation that's attached to the ring starts the first thing when the ring is attached to the DOM. And uh, it's immediately scaled down into this tiny size, just 0.01 of its original scale. And then over the next five seconds, it's gradually uh, scaled back up again to the full size. But also at the same time, there's another parallel animation that fades it out. So the result is this expanding, fading ring effect, which lasts for five seconds, which also happens to be the lifetime of the whole component. For the light, there's this flash animation that's kind of similar. It begins by uh, scaling the div down into a tiny size, but then very quickly, in just 50 milliseconds, I uh, expand it out to the full size. So there's this rapid expansion. And as a third step after that, in the following second, it's scaled down again and faded out at the same time. So there's this flashing effect that lasts for just over a second. And those are really the kinds of things you need to build something like this. So you need some visual effects, which you can make with CSS and NG Animate. You need some sounds, which you can make with web audio. And you need a bit of Angular code to actually pull it all together, and a bit of RxJS. But not really that much. It's actually quite simple to do. Now, the thing about projects like this, though, is that when you're playing with them, one thing kind of always leads to the next, and you get more ideas what, what you would like to do. And one thing that may occur to you, or at least it occurred to me, is that why am I doing this manually? Like, couldn't this instrument basically play itself? Because as a programmer, I have, I have this natural urge to automate all possible things. So, yeah, can we make this play itself? Well, of course we can, but to kind of find inspiration for that, we have to find some technology that's a little bit older than Angular 2. It's actually even a little bit older than Angular 1. It's about 5,000 years old. Wind chimes. Because here we have an object that has this magical ability to make music, to make stuff without supervision, autonomously. So what this is, in fact, is an example of a generative system. So wind chimes are a very simple, a very primitive generative system, which um, 
is thousands of years old, but still has this capability to uh, make infinite variations of melodies and rhythms while just you know, hanging from a porch or from a, from a tree branch somewhere. So we often think of generative systems as, as things we do with algorithms and computers, but this has been going on for a lot longer than that. And um, so that's quite a feature, actually, for something that's so old. Uh, and what wind chimes also happen to be is one of the earliest examples that we know of, of humans making what you could call generative art, or art made with the help of generative systems. Because if you make one of these things, you make a number of artistic decisions on how it looks and how it feels and how it sounds and what it represents to you. But you do not make the music itself. The music is generated at runtime. And it's not generated by you or anyone else, it's generated by the weather. So the wind actually plays this instrument. You could say that wind chimes literally pull music out of thin air. And that is what I call technological innovation. Now, the question we then have, if we kind of think this is cool, is that, well, can we port this, te this technology to Angular. Now, granted, this is, again, one of those things that Angular wasn't probably exactly designed for. Now, I don't know exactly what happens inside Google, but this is probably not the, one of the projects they've been using Angular for. But um, we could try anyway. In fact, we kind of have half of it already, because we have those chime components. And the thing about components is that they can be reused in, in new contexts pretty easily. So we could use those. What we're really just missing then is the wind. But maybe that could be an Angular service. And maybe we could connect that to the chimes using Angular's one-way data flow architecture, which in this case is really just like a metaphor for one-way airflow. Okay. I mean, this is a straightforward architectural diagram. We could probably take this to, you know, wind chime makers in ancient Egypt. And they would say, yes, this is very easy to reason about. But, so this is promising, but we still have this question then, how do we implement wind? Now, wind, of course, is a weather phenomenon, but as such, it's really way too complicated for us to model in a system like this. So what I did is I reduced wind into this very simple process which is just random numbers generated at regular time intervals. Because if you then go up and plot a line through those random points, you get this curve which you can think of as a simulated wind speed over time. And if you then go and sample that curve very frequently, say 10 times more frequently than what you have random numbers for, you get this succession of values that is always kind of increasing or decreasing slightly depending on what the wind speed is doing at that point in time. Now, what we actually want the wind to do here, though, is to kind of substitute the clicks we were making and kind of play the instrument for us. So we need these discrete events happening over time. And we can get that from this representation if we treat these wind speed samples, treat each one of them as a probability of whether at that point in time a chime event should be produced. If we do that, we get this stream of discrete events that is sometimes firing more rapidly when the wind is stronger and sometimes less rapidly when it's not so strong. And it's kind of random, but it's not too random so that it actually feels natural and might sound good. So that is the wind that we actually want to observe. So what we end up with there is, well, a wind service that has a blow method that returns an observable. And this observable that we need, we can craft in a few steps. So we begin with a scheduled interval, which fires every 200 milliseconds and produces this infinite stream of increasing integer numbers. And then we can divide each of those integers by 10, because we are modeling that smaller sample time step, which was one-tenth of the time step of the random numbers that we have. And then for each of these steps, we interpolate the value of the wind curve at this point in time. So we find the nearest x values from that point, which are the nearest integers. And then we find the corresponding y values, which are basically just a lookup table of random numbers. And then we do some linear interpolation to figure out where exactly we are at this point in time. And the result of that is this regular sampling every 200 milliseconds of this simulated wind curve. 
And then there's just one more thing to do, which is to filter this observable with this random function, which is more likely to pass when the wind, wind speed is stronger or when the probabilities are higher, because that gives us that exact observable that we need. And that is then something we can go and plug into our components. So the component can now get wind injected in as a dependency, and it can call the blow method immediately to get out this observable. Uh, and then we can do a similar mapping to it as we were doing with the clicks earlier, which is to attach to each of these events a random musical note. But this time we can also attach random visual coordinates so that the, the visualization gets put somewhere in a random location on the screen. And we still hold on to these events for five seconds before we let them go. And so here we're adding to these visual effects and these sounds, this sort of stochastic wind process that will actually generate the music and the visualization for us. If we look at the browser developer tools when this application is running, we see that we're actually comfortably rendering at 60 frames per second. And that's because we're not actually doing very much work at all. We're only touching the DOM when a new chime is generated or when an old one leaves that five second time window. And the rest of the time we're running animations and we are playing sounds, but that's all native and off the main thread thanks to the Web Audio API and the Web Animations API, which is what NG Animate is using here. And so, I began by saying that I'm really doing this stuff in order to kind of learn Angular 2 and these other technologies, and I'm happy to say that that's actually exactly what has happened. I've kind of learned a huge amount about NG Animate and Web Audio and RxJS and all kinds of things while doing this. And the thing is, I've learned all of that stuff without ever feeling like I was kind of having to study. Because that's not what I was doing. I was just playing around and having fun and passing time. And learning just happened as a byproduct of me doing that. And those are the reasons why I think we should allow ourselves a permission to play more often with these technologies. Because you learn so much and because it's just so much fun. And a great way for a responsible adult to kind of give themselves a permission to play with a good conscience is to just call it art. <laughs> so in that vein, what I have built here is really an abstract reinterpretation of ancient wind chimes in the medium of Angular 2.